The next thing for us is to energy and consumption. The problem is, um, what? 0.27. Yep. Cool. Why can't I save that? Uh, is it because? Um, do we need add solar production? Can we? We do not have any solar production devices. All right. So. I know that there's an integration. I don't know what the requirements are. If we go to, we've got states here. Where would we see the entities? Uh, devices and services, maybe. Devices, here we go. So we've got devices, entities here. Um, we've got sensors. So what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna try and extrapolate from the sensors what gets added when I add an integration, like the Solax integration, for example, which I can switch off because the Solax inverter is attached to the grid, we can communicate with it, but it won't actually contribute to the off-grid portion of the house. So if I go to add-ons and add, hang on, no, it's not going to be in here. It's going to be an integration, isn't it? So does that get added in add-ons? God, I'm unfamiliar with this. So I apologize to anybody who's watching. Uh, I don't think it does. Where do we add? Is it under devices and integration? There it is. All right, and we've got Solax power. Uh, it is three. Uh, I'm really, this is in a different VLAN, so I don't know if it's going to be able to um, traverse the uh, router or not. Let's have a look. 192.168.3.106. Um, what is the username password? Here we go. That's working. It's working. All right. So we go. Where are we going to add it? Um, it's in the carport. Let's add it there. Once that shows up, I can see my Fronius ones as well. That's handy, isn't it? Uh, right, so Alex is there. One device. Cool. Let's go to the energy dashboard and go next. Add solar production. There it is. Okay. All right. Do they just need to end in energy? Can we add exported energy to today's energy imported energy? Finished. And then We've got another one. There's actually five out there in total. We're just not seeing the other ones because they're not currently being used, but that's all right. Some of these are producing power. Oh, hang on. Is that other one head? Doesn't look like I did. <coughs> Do I need a refresh, maybe? There we go. Uh, primo, primo. Yeah, we got stuff now. All right, very good. Oh, it's got a battery icon next to it. That's cool. Go back to states. We don't have a stage yet. What's going on? There we go, reboot. Oh, let's not do that. Right, let's have a look. Um, oh, hang on a minute. They don't have Fronius in the name. They've got Galvo. Oh, shit, it's probably already there. Didn't need to restart, but... Oh, well. Uh, all right, so what do we got here? We've got total increase in what hours? That's today. I mean, is that the sensor type? Device class, energy. Shit. Um... I bet you any money the sensors we're making don't have a class associated with them. Current. I reckon energy for the year, so that's what hours increasing. Total energy is what hours increasing, alright. Uh, we'll use the Solax one and see if. Daily remaining capacity. Where are we? Network voltage. Power now is a class power, which is okay, all right, that's fine, but is there an energy in here? There's one right there. 8.3 kilowatt hours. So does that mean now that that's going to show up as an energy source? The elbows are there, Solex is there, energy today. Okay, so that's why they're not showing up. We need a 
we need to do accumulation. So if I go back to file editor, we need one of these to be a, a cumulative power over the day. So let me go and check the uh, Victron documentation to see if there's a Modbus setting for cumulative solar power today. The um, Modbus list uh, of addresses from for the CCGX and right there, Victron Energy yield today from uh, yield today for today on track is zero. We really want like. Is that for an MPP? Is that for like an inverter that's got four MPPTs in it? Because they're using the term tracker, and I think that's independent MPPT trackers. So really, uh, yeah, look, there it is again. Um, there's no description here as to whether or not that's... Um, is that for a specific version of an inverter that's got four uh, MPPTs on it? Or is that just the historic total? And... Uh, that's not super clear so <clears throat> um, solar to AC out energy from solar to AC out energy solar to battery so I mean both of those are production right in my opinion like they add up uh, out to inverter what's out to inverter mean? all right we need to set up those and extrapolate what they mean so the addresses are all right but they're both, they're all in the... Okay, so I've selected two more, uh, sorry, three more MPPTs. Um, I've got the one at 226 um, with the address 784 and we're going for the total kilowatt hours pulled from the device. 215 at 784 again, information pulled from the device, and 784 at 223. Um, again, state class total, uh, device classes, energy, um, and they should now appear in our sensor list. Oh, that was the right one. There we go, so we've got 170. This, this is obviously wrong. Something's, um, we've probably got to put a different scale factor on this because they haven't, they haven't spat out 171 kilowatt hours today and that one hasn't done 71 kilowatt hours today. I'd be very shocked if it had because I've only got a 90 kilowatt battery. Um, so we'll go back and have a look at that in a minute. Um, otherwise I've added them down here. Uh, it does take some time. Um, it could take up to two hours for this to get populated with data. Uh, so it says, but um, we can see that there's some, some data has come in from the Primo already. Um, and apparently we've sent 24 kilowatt hours back to the battery. So I assume some of the scales aren't correct. Um, or some of these don't even have a scale. I didn't notice maybe there was one. I want to I wanna say one had a scale of 0 0.1, which is the percentage, I think. So you can just append a scale to it. There it is, scale 0 0.1. That's a voltage. So... Yeah, like I feel like um, the guy's question was, uh, let me go and find the question. So this is the question. I'd love to see a video about how to get, uh, to go about setting up MQTD to and from Victron HA. Uh, I've watched other videos, but something's missing in them or something is missing in my brain, but I've <laughs> never got it to work, thanks. So this wasn't MQTT. This was Modbus, um, but that's the, the tutorial doesn't actually suit everybody else anyway. There's there's lots of things that need to be modified to make to make it work. Um, so I suppose if I had to contextualise today um, for someone who's trying to figure out how to do this, this is probably the better way to do it. I think it's it's an industrial standard, um, and it's well I don't I don't really think it matters, but that. This would be my preference, really. Like, I, I don't even know how to justify it to myself. Um, understanding what the slave means and what part of the system that the slave is actually referring to is important. Um, and you can see, sorry, my neighbor's got a lumpy old V8. Um, I'll just pause that while he's reversing his car in. 
Okay, so yeah, we've got the slave device is the, the actual representation of the device uh, in the servo controller or Venus device. So depending on your setup, um, this could be like, I'll just bring this over. Um, for me, for example, my uh, inverter is attached to the VE bus. So I'm looking for the VE bus device. Um, so we'll just jump over the remote console. And the VE bus device there is my Quattro at unit ID 227. Now, if you've got an all-in-one, uh, that's going to change it because you might have to use, um, like let's, we, there's a multi here, so you might have to use the multis um, register to get this information. So you need to marry up, you need to map out um, this unit ID with the appropriate register here. Um, I, I don't know for certain how important it is to get the type correct, like I'm not sure if it throws an exception inside of um, Home Assistant or not, or if it just does, you know, like JavaScript for example, when you do something in JavaScript, it just does the conversion as best it can. There's no, I don't know if you'd call it type safe or not, but like in C or C++ it would have a tantrum if you tried to cast something. Uh, you know, like equal to another value type, it would have a conniption. So um, I don't know how important that is. So just pay close attention to making sure that when you define these values that you define them as the right type and that you use the right scale factor um, to get the correct details. I'll, I'll continue working on this, but I feel like this video has already gotten fairly long um, and it might sort of, um, it might help old matey, um, what was his name? Uh, missed it. There he goes, PPI 57. It might help him to, to at least get past his, um, his hurdle, I hope. Um, probably been a little bit lengthier than it needed to be. Um, but I think the takeaway here is that when you create a sensor, there's particular types of sensors that the energy dashboard wants. And it's not the now, it's not the immediate power, it's the total power it wants to see. So you can have a sensor of type power, that's great for a gauge. Um, that is not great for the energy dashboard. For the energy dashboard, it wants a total or a total increasing state type with an energy with a class of energy. So you, you have to make these sensors, right? So these sensors are great if you want gauges, cool. But if you want the energy dashboard to consume this data, then, then it needs to be these sensors. Um, so you have to select that carefully from the list. Um, I've filtered this list. Where did I filter the list? Does anybody... It's a shame I can't get some feedback because um, I think it was this one. Yeah, it was this one. So I filtered the list by kilowatt hours just to give me back um, the ones that could give me an energy total. Um, but there's plenty of others. So that you could turn these into, into gauges, right? And that'd be pretty cool. You could put warning you know, dashboards up saying, hey, you're too much power is going into the battery for over too long of a period. Probably do a lot of cool things, but um, for today, for the purposes of today's video, all we were trying to do is get the data into here. I haven't seen those other, those other sensors haven't produced anything yet. Maybe we should just have a quick look. Uh, we'll send the wake up message again. That might, might have been the wrong sensor to use, you know. DC, uh, where are we? What's it going to be on the history, I guess? Daily, today, is that today? Um, yield 7.38. Is that yield, is, is that yield kilowatt hours in 7.38? Uh, this is the 150, oh, it could be. Uh, probably hasn't even produced that much, to be perfectly honest with you. 277, go to 279. This one should have been doing sort of four-ish kilowatts um, for it's 11 o'clock, so probably about four or five hours. So we're looking for 16 to 20 kilowatts, maybe? 17.75, yeah, okay, so that's the yield in kilowatt hours. Um, maybe I'll make another video once I actually figure out how all these things work. Maybe we will build one out of MQTT instead because um, that yield's a bit easier to read, I think. Um, let's go and have a look at the states. Now you see there is a number there. So these are producing something. Um, if that is MPPT1, we need to do a scale factor on that. Um, where did my document go? No, I was looking for MQTT, so oh, wake up. 
Come on, solar charges. Here we are. 279. Um, we go history daily today 17.8 and that's 178 I have a sneaking suspicion this is the same one so this is large 250 we go let's look for the large 250 226 is the last 250, so back to this. Um, file editor. 226, yeah, so that is it. So let's do a scale factor of. Um, I just want to sandy check this because I'm likely to get this wrong. So 178 times by 0 0.1, 17.8. So let's add scale 3.1. I don't know if that's where it's going to go, if there's a somewhere else that should live, but let's do that. Um, develop tools, restart. Happy days, 18 kilowatts. And I reckon if I go back to MQTC now, in the time since the restart's happened, we should see 279, history, daily, zero. 17.969, so that has rounded it out to 18. Hasn't popped up in here yet, but that's okay. Um, this does say that it'll take a little while for the data to show up, so I'm not overly concerned about it. Um, I think the fact that we can actually see the sensors in here, so let's go energy configuration. Um, we can see the sensors in here, that's a start. Like we know that that's the one. Um, so I'm not sure how often the energy dashboard runs its, you know, runs its job to update, but um, yeah, like it, it, it doesn't happen quickly. It sort of happens over the course of the day. So um, pretty content that that, after a certain period of time, will actually show the 18 kilowatts that's been produced. Um, it, does it do it every half an hour? I don't know. Uh, it's 11:44 now, so I would have thought this would have updated again since then, but it doesn't appear to have. Um, but yeah, this video is already long enough, I think, so let's, uh, let's call it there. Um, I'm, I hope this helps that guy out. Um, he hasn't given us any other context on what it is he was trying to achieve. Um, but, uh, yeah, like if hopefully that lights the way, if it doesn't, uh, add another comment and I will, uh, I'll add some more feedback. Um, in the meanwhile, I'm going to go and try and figure this out, um, like how this actually looks. And I think... Uh, last night, um, last night I downloaded um, the dev kit. Um, there isn't a Victron add-on, by the way. I'm going through the Fronius one, seeing if I can adapt it over to work as a, as the Victron um, integration. So if we go to the Fronius one, or even the Solax, where's the Solax one? Oh Jesus, some add-ons for this thing, isn't there? Oh, Solax one's not in there. Go to the Fronius one. So, God, there's some bloody stuff. Uh, where are we? Fronius, here we are. So, just looking at this, I think we could replicate this um, so it represents the Victron gear and do an actual integration to the Victron gear instead of um, instead of trying to bastardise the Victron gear into um, you know into into Home Assistant manually. Like we know that there's some major contributing. Uh, configuration items like what type of an inverter do you have that'll that'll decide whether or not you should be looking for the device that has um, uh, let's use the names from here like Victron or com .victron energy ve bus for example or is it um, com .victron energy inverter or multi you know I think there's the multi there so I think they're configurable items that you could say hey um, you know, like, here's the wizard, select the type of inverter that you have, and that could be a new numerator that says, well, it's the Victron Energy dot multi. And we know what the addresses are, so you could just statically set them. You could say, how many PEV charges have you got? Well, I've got X number of PEV charges. All right, well, tell me what their IDs are. 
Um, so I think that's totally achievable, not, not in the um, length of this video, but um, I reckon we could uh, make something happen. And maybe the community might, um, you know, come to the party and give us a hand. Um, I'd, be, I'd be keen to invest some time in it. Uh, so if you think it's worthwhile, um, add a comment. Um, and again, thanks for all the subscribers. Um, we're just a video log. Like this is never intended to be a significant uh, investment on our behalf, but um, people are subscribing and we appreciate it. And people are uh, participating in the community by commenting on the video. So it's awesome. Thanks very much. Um, and I'll see you in the next one.